Well, if you've ever doubted the toughness and durability of our participants, well, then you haven't met Steph Morris. I caught up with her husband, David, when I arrived on course today to find out how Steph was going following that very bad fall at Penrith on Thursday, the 29th of December. He said, don't ask me, ask Steph, she's just over there. So I did, and I'm catching up with Steph now to have a chat about that fall and how quickly she has recovered. Well, Steph, it's great to see you here at Club Menangle today. I wasn't expecting to see you here after that very bad fall at Penrith, but you come through remarkably well. Yeah, um, I, I feel fine, so I thought I'd better show my face and let everyone know that I was okay. So what was the extent of the injuries, first of all? Uh, just a concussion, uh, which was lucky. They suspected a broken collarbone early, um, but once all the adrenaline had worn off, I could have told them that nothing was wrong, but they did all their checks, which is, uh, you know, really good that they don't send you home uh, on a whim. <laughs> Apart from a, a nasty bruise on your, your arm and leg, you're perfectly fine. Yeah, I just have a, I got a bit of a bruise on my elbow and uh, just one on my leg, but I couldn't even tell you how I got them, so uh, hitting the ground unconscious probably has its perks. You don't remember anything about the fall, but you do now realise what happened after watching the many views as far as the different angles. Yeah, uh, my memory goes up until the horse collapsed underneath me. Um, and then I don't remember waking up on the track. I don't remember any of that. Um, I just remember waking up again. Like, my first memory is when I'm uh, conscious in the ambulance. Um, so I guess if you don't have to remember your falls, it's pretty good. Steph, how did it all unfold? Um, it's just really unlucky. Uh, still not 100% sure if the horse got on its own shoe or if it got itself tangled up in its hobble. Um, I actually thought we were going to run a place and it was big odds like, you know, most of mine are when they're running placings or winning. Um, I was really happy with how he's trekking into the race and the next minute um, he was just underneath me and I was up in the air. <laughs> it's bad enough having a fall, but even worse when it's your husband running into the back of you. I don't know, people say it's worse, but I've got a bit of leverage now, so it's not too bad. David didn't realise the seriousness of the fall until he got into the back straight and noticed that you still hadn't moved. Yeah, we always try to say, you know, if, you, if you've fallen and you're okay, try to get up um, so everyone else knows you're okay. And if you're really hurt, just stay down because the ambulance and, you know, medical staff, they'll come to you. Um, he rushed off and gave his horse to somebody else. And when he come back over to me, he said he was just yelling at me, but um, obviously I was out of it, so I didn't hear any of that. And, uh, yeah, he feared the worst. According to David, you were just lying there on the track having a snooze. In fact, you were even snoring, according to the story of Michael Court today. Yeah, so I don't know how long I was out for on the track, but for a couple of minutes, um, you know, they were checking my pulse and that because they couldn't get any response out of me, no groans or moans. And... He said then a couple minutes went by and I just started snoring, but um, all the mums out there will tell you that we need a, a harder nap. <laughs> you mentioned the fact that you had the concussion. It could have been a lot worse because your helmet was smashed in. Yeah, uh, definitely. I would have hit the ground with some force because my helmet's got a nice crack through it. So uh, Harness Racing's made sure that that's um, been taken away. So we won't be, we'll be looking for a new helmet. I'll get a nice new paint job done. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you think about how hard those helmets are, I definitely hit the ground with some force. Steph, the medical staff, both on course and at West Bead Hospital, outstanding. Oh, 100%. I don't know how they stay so calm, especially with, you know, like everybody watching on, they would have been a little bit erratic. And I don't know how composed Davey was, but he would have been, you know, yelling and screaming until he knew I was okay. Um, so yeah, they definitely, they do an unreal job. You certainly did an unreal job because while you were waiting at Westmead Hospital for a room, you were still watching Pen and the Trots. <laughs> yeah, well, I still had two engagements that I obviously didn't get to feel that night and I just wanted to see how they went. Um, they both went really well. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the protocol now, Steph, before you can get back driving? I'm um, still a little unsure, but um, obviously I'll have to have some checkups um, just with my general GP and I'll have to see with harness racing if um, I need to have any checkups on their half. Um, but... As soon as I feel well enough, I hope I'm back in the sulky. Well, it was a wonderful 2022 up until then. Got married. Both you and David were driving plenty of winners. It did end on a good note the fact that you were able to get up and now walk away from that incident. So hopefully 2023, bigger and better. Yeah, we always just, you know, can hope for that. Um, 
we always take for granted how lucky we are and how easily things can go bad out there. So uh, hopefully we have a better, better year this year, but um, it wasn't too bad last year.